Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and uh, today's video is going to be a little different. It's sort of plans for profit, but not exactly. <laughs> uh, I recently got in a big order of boosts, mostly, although there's a few other extra plants that were in there. And uh, I was thinking to myself, I haven't really ever done a tutorial on taking plants like this and how I attach them to wood or rock. Now, you've probably seen a thousand of these, and really the secret is very simple. Super glue. So let's go over a quick tutorial just on how to do this. And uh, I'll cover some of the species that were recently shown in a video showing when I put the running river into a tank of what all I've picked up and kind of what's new for this tank. So first things first, whenever we're gonna attach anything using super glue, it's really important that we talk about exactly what we're talking about. And for our cases, see if uh, we can get old camera here to focus. It's only gonna focus on my face. <laughs> it's too much on my face in the camera. So anyway, what you want is just standard super glue gel, not the liquid. Uh, and you can find all sorts of, there's Gorilla Glue versions. Don't waste your money on those. Go to the dollar store, get this stuff. Uh, the important part is that it's cyanoacrylate. And, and all that matters there is that once the cyanoacrylate hits water, it cures instantly and becomes inert, AKA non-toxic. That's why it's safe for all of our fish. And this is good for anything from moss to epiphyte plants like your Anubiuses, your Booses, Java ferns, etc. Can't be that hard, right? Take a piece of hardscape glue, put it on there. Number one tip, even though I'm not doing it today because I, I literally ran out, Wear a pair of gloves, uh, just any kind of simple nitrile. Don't use latex, uh, just something simple. It's commonly those black gloves that you see aquascapers use. That's what you're looking for. Uh, you don't have to buy the fancy uh, <laughs> aquascaping brand ones. You can go buy them in bulk off Amazon or something like that. But in general, the only reason why we suggest that is it prevents you from gluing yourself to either yourself or some other part of the hardscape. Like I said, I ran out, so I'm going to do this barehanded. But I've done this enough times, I probably shouldn't glue myself. I hope. Second, we need a surface. In my case, if you guys remember, when I aquascaped the tank behind me, I had a lot of leftover Seriu stone, and that's what I'm going to use. So you generally just want to find yourself a good flat surface. And you'll notice, like, in this particular piece, it's kind of rounded on top, but lots of flat surface. And then it's also got a relatively flat backside, and I think uh, I'm going to use the more rounded top, just because I like the way it looks. Now, for my first specimen of boost, which is this guy right here, uh, you notice it's not in rock wool. I actually bought this from a local hobbyist, so it's a little wet from coming out of the tank, and that's a good thing. It'll help this cure faster. What we're going to do is we're just going to put a thin bead of glue down, and I also suggest having a towel on the side to dry your hands in between. So you should be able to see that little bead of glue right there on the rock. And all I'm going to do, if we tilt like this so you can see, is take this part of my rhizome that doesn't have leaves, and I'm just going to press it into the glue. Now, in my case, this one actually has a small baby plant attached to it, and normally I would take these apart and glue them separately. But in this case, I'm okay with it being one piece attached to this rock for my purposes. So other than the fact that this is an epiphyte, and this is generally what we do, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you hold this for about a minute or so. And then from there, you should be pretty safe to put it in a tank. Just taking a look. So you can already see, I really even haven't done it for a minute. It's already got a pretty strong bond, but we'll make sure, we'll just hold this for a second. And, and what we're doing here is we're making sure that a good majority of the glue is started to cure already from the small amount of moisture that's on the plant. That way, once it hits water, the plant is less likely to float away off of the piece of hardscape. You can do the same thing with wood, but I've found that in general, super glue works a lot better on uh, rocks than wood. You can do both. It's just about making sure the wood is relatively dry and not too wet. If it's wet, you'll need a kind of a thick bead of glue. Uh, and sometimes it can be a little more troublesome, but you can get it done. 
The other way to do this, of course, is to use something like fishing line, but I much prefer the super glue method because it's a lot cleaner and I don't have to clean up line later on. The only case where I might actively use something like fishing line would be with moss. So there you go. There's a little piece of rock, nice little piece of boost. This in particular, so this species here, you can see it, is called black marble. And you'll notice in its structure, it's very similar to pink lady, which I've shown in the past has these longer, bigger stems. Actually, most of the booths I have today is all kind of generally like this. But uh, the big difference is on the back of the leaves, you can see it doesn't have that rosy pink hue at all. It's very green. And then once this gets nice color and sits underwater, you'll see kind of a blackish blue uh, coloration that comes to the top of the leaf. Really, really pretty plant. Got this from a local hobbyist named Justin. Big shout out to him if he's watching. Just big thanks. I really like getting neat boost like this. Uh, plus it's one I haven't grown before. So we'll show that again with a different species, but this one came out of a pot. So we're going to show that again with a different species, but this one came out of a pot and you can kind of see here in the roots, there's a little leftover stuff from the rock wool. So first what we'll want to do is just get that a little cleaned up. If you can get a bucket nearby, just work with it. If you have bigger pieces of rock wool, uh, you will want to go ahead and take something like your pair of tongs, if you got a pair of tongs for planting, and just use that to pick at it. This is really small, so I kind of can just manipulate my fingers lightly over these bits of roots and get the last little pieces off. This particular species is really cool, called Silver Stein. So it has a kind of a, a silvery hue to it, if you will. But this just came fresh in. So you can see again, big leaves kind of like the, the marble was and these longer stems that have a light red color, but we've got a nice chunk of rhizome here and some roots. So when you have roots like this, try not to get too much glue on the roots. You wanna glue it across one side of the rhizome, whichever one you have the best angle at. So for my case, it's actually the piece facing you right here. So again, we're gonna take out, find ourselves a stone. This is a pretty good one right here. Gonna make sure our hands are nice and dry. Actually, I really like this face here. I'm gonna show it to you. So I'm gonna use this. We're just gonna put a thin bead right where we can. Um, I'm gonna try, just because of how big this piece is, I'm gonna try not to pocket it in this little crevice, but I'm gonna put it right above it, right here on this flat. Nice bit of glue there. And then again, we'll carefully take the side that has the roots furthest away we get our bead and we will just gently press the rhizome into that bead and a little bit of moisture is going to help us set that in place. And we're going to hold this for 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, if you're really patient and you want to hold it for five minutes, you can. That's going to make sure it's incredibly stable. But honestly, within 15 seconds or so, the small amount of moisture that's there should help start uh, curing the glue and making it pretty safe so that the plant will stick on there. But I like to be a little extra safe when I'm doing it with plants like this because I don't want to have to keep gluing it multiple times. Uh, now I've done this plenty of times before, but treat every time like it's your first. Just be extra cautious, take your time, it pays off in the long run. So definitely not in a minute yet, but you can already see Got a nice bond. Now we have this nice piece of rock that we can set like this. The, the boost leaves will adjust naturally and the rhizome will start to grow. And it'll be doing just fine. Or we could set this thing more like a weird little blade in there and prop it up somewhere or actually dig it in. The big thing is we make sure, of course, we don't bury our rhizome. So I'm just gonna hold a little more pressure here so we enjoy this. Now let me talk about the other couple of species I've got while I get this. This one is really cool and I've actually got two types of this species. So this is Green Skeleton King. I know the focus is not fantastic because my camera is being a jerk but there's that. And then there's also Dark Skeleton King and there's another one out there there's like the Black Skeleton King. That one has become more and more hard to find. You'll see an obvious difference right away much darker these leaves are and toward the back you'll also see kind of a, a red hue coming in on the dark skeleton king where the green if I pick that back up and show you definitely a very bright green leaf on the back so just nice easy difference to look at and see 
This guy is ready to go. We can move on and do our next one. So we've done plenty of these big rhizome style ones. Let's try something smaller. First, I'll show you what we're looking at. Much smaller boosts as we look in this pot. This is a, a tricolor species, uh, really similar to like the Catherine in its leaf pattern. The nice part about uh, boost, because it has those rhizomes, the rock wool is pretty easy. Just so you can just break it open. You can see the couple different pieces that are in this pot. So let me give you a good piece. This will be our, our piece that we'll test with. So you can see that little guy right there. Very pretty. So let's go ahead with a smaller rhizome. It's the same process. The only difference is because the rhizome is so small, we need to just be a little bit more careful to make sure that we don't glue ourselves, either the rock or again, ourselves, which could be even worse. So we're looking for a nice flat surface. I think with this particular rock, I'm gonna show you this. It's got this, this kind of nice facing here. So what I'm going to do is glue right along the very top and, and get it so that my boost can sit kind of right in here, right? There's this little ledge right here, and I'm actually gonna glue onto that ledge. That makes sense. So we'll set my piece of boost to the side, get our handy super glue, get this area nice and coated in glue. Again, this is where we wanna be, with smaller rhizomes like this, we wanna be really careful. So it's right on the inside of this little outcrop there. Do you see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the roots of this plant facing myself, at least the more short, so the, the side that's facing the camera right now is what has the roots kind of furthest away or the most rhizome exposed so that I can press this in. And again, it's pieces like this where you definitely want a pair of gloves because these small rhizomes like this, you're a lot more likely to get glue that goes around the rhizome and onto you. And uh, that's no fun. So we're just gonna hold this in place and let it cure and see how I've got it arranged here. That way we've got this nice piece of boost that's gonna poke out over this piece of rock. Now, why do we do stuff like this, like small rocks like this, individual pieces? For growing purposes on a plants for profit scale, this is what you wanna do, small pieces, or you can do what my friend Eric Lucas does and get literally just little pieces of ceramic media and use that if you wanna go true, true pure plants for profit. But in the case of slightly aquascape, slightly plants for profit, we go this route. We let it grow out and then we trim off the pieces that we want to sell and we still have a nice pretty piece of boost attached to this beautiful rock that gives us a nice little showpiece for our tank. This is already getting a nice good bond in there. And there we go. So if we look from the back side, you can see that. Ready to go. This piece is ready for the tank. So we'll just repeat this process with basically everything that we need. Now, in the case of rhizomes, this is all pretty simple. It's all about just using just the right amount of glue, which is usually kind of just a thin bead, letting it cure, making sure that you don't coat the roots and don't like completely clog up the rhizome. Just like a thin line across the back or one side of the rhizome should do your trick. And this can be done with Anubius, Boost, even Java Fern can use the same process. So it's really simple. Uh, the only time where this becomes a little more different is when we start looking at things like moss. Now, we'll save that for another time. I just wanted to do a short video, show you kind of how I do this stuff. From here, I'm gonna finish gluing a bunch of stuff, getting rocks in place, but we'll get you some B-roll a little later so that you can see once this stuff is all in the tank, what it looks like. With that being said, guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Uh, just a quick tutorial of how I do this. I know it's simple and you've probably seen this a million times, but uh, I figured to myself, I've never actually filmed this and I need to do it anyway. Why not film it just so we can show folks the way that I like to attach things when it comes to hardscape and epiphyte plants. So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a little like, leave a comment down below. What's your favorite plant? What's your favorite way to attach epiphytes? Maybe you don't like using glue, maybe you prefer something else. Let me know down below. Really love hearing from you guys. Uh, if you don't like short tutorials like this, feel free to hit the dislike twice. And uh, I, I guess you, you need something way cooler and, or way more entertaining with big shiny things and flashy stuff. <laughs> this is your first time check out this channel. I do all sorts of stuff concerning aquatic plants. 
uh, rainbow fish, tutorials, not necessarily aquascaping, I'm not really an aquascaper, but this is like the closest to an aquascape tank I have that I'm working with right now. And uh, yeah, so just kind of check it out. We have a live stream every Tuesday. We do all sorts of cool Q and A's, uh, topical stuff for the first part, and then we go into a Q and A. Lots and lots of stuff. Education is kind of my primary focus when it comes to uh, teaching about fish and trying to help people get significantly better at this hobby. So if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Ring that little notification bell, that way you don't miss anything. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And stay awesome.